It is Wednesday, September 18th, 2019. My name is Ashton Ellett, here with another installment of the Two-Party Georgia Oral History Project, sponsored by the Richard B. Russell Library at the University of Georgia. I'm here today with Mr. Roy Simpkins. That's Leroy Simpkins for any Georgia political buffs watching this. Here at his office in Augusta, Georgia. Mr. Simpkins is a longtime Georgia Republican, a former state representative. He's also the founder and president of the Simpkins Land Company here in Augusta. Thank you very much, Mr. Simpkins, for your, your time and your hospitality. Um, well, thank I, you, Ashton, for coming. Uh, well, I, I wouldn't miss out. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. Um, and I was wondering if we could just start by, by tell, us, tell us a little bit about your childhood and your upbringing growing up here in Augusta and, and across the line in South Carolina. Well, I, I grew up in a little community called Beach Island, which is a very historical community, and that's B-double-E-C-H. Like Island. the tree. Um, it's about, from downtown Augusta, it's about 15 miles away. And um, I grew up on a farm there. And my father, uh, in addition to being a farmer, had a, a seed company here in Augusta and a construction company here. So his business was really, and he spent most of his time at his, his um, office here on, on Broad Street. Um, we, were, we were a very apolitical family, really. I don't ever recall talking politics growing up. Uh, I did things that uh, most country boys do. I loved to, I loved to hunt and I loved to fish. And um, we played sandlot baseball, and I, I guess you'd have to call it sandlot football too. <laughs> but um, uh, I had a I had a lot of buddies that lived in that area, and, and most of them were black. Uh, but when I graduated, I went to grammar school in Beach Island, and. Um, and they didn't have a high school over there. From there, you would normally um, uh, um, matriculate to North Augusta High School, but following the tradition of my father and my grandfather, I went to Richmond Academy here in Augusta, which was, you know, one of the early educational institutions. My, I in think the it was state. the first, uh, and uh, you know, the oldest. And I don't know how uh, that the, the politics worked in those days, but I do know that. I was able to come from South Carolina to a public school in in Richmond County, <laughs> Georgia, and uh, and there was never any never any question about that. In fact, there were several of us that did that. Right. And uh, and, uh, it, it, it was it was a little tough going back and forth to Beach Island afternoon because I didn't have any regular way of of getting home, and I was always trying to, anxious to get home to see if I couldn't get in a little hunting before the <laughs> before the, it got dark. And uh, uh, but uh, we had we had just a great time in those days. And uh, so when I graduated from Richmond Academy, and I was they only had eleven grades, and uh, that's right. And my mother thought I was too young to go to college, so. She thought it best that I go to a year of postgraduate school somewhere, so I went to Darlington School for one year in Rome, mm -hmm. and uh, and then uh, from there uh, I wound up mainly because I, my best friend here in Augusta was going there already. But I wound up going to Washington Lee University in Lexington, Virginia, uh, and I, uh, that was a that was a terrific experience for me. Um, it's a great school. I wish I could go back and do it again because <laughs> I didn't I didn't get nearly as much out of it as I should have uh, academically. I got a lot out of it socially. <laughs> uh, now you ma you majored in in geology? I majored in geology. What what drew you to, to I that? I don't know. I was just <laughs> always interested in things to do with the earth. Okay. And uh, and, but at Washington Lee, you could get a liberal arts education in geology, strangely enough. Hmm. I, had a, I got an A.D. degree. 
Well, or BA, however you want to do it. Sure, sure. But um, I took, uh, you know, a lot of liberal arts courses in the history, mm -hmm. the humanities, and philosophy. Right. And uh, and took some courses in economics, of course. But um, it sounds like you got quite a bit out of it. Uh, yeah, well, I. I did, I did, Washington Lee helped me to, to, to learn how to write. And, uh, and I, I think I probably had some, I didn't, I, I don't think, I know I had some really good teachers in both ground school and high school. Mm -hmm. And uh, Richmond Academy was an incredible school. It was, you know, the all male, mm -hmm. military, public high school. We'd done heard of the right. day. And uh, all of my professors were male. All of them were long time. All of them were stern. <laughs> uh, but all of them were good. And mm -hmm. uh, by the time you graduated from, from Richmond, even though it was 11 years, I had classmates to go to Harvard and Princeton and Tech and mm -hmm. Georgia and wherever, Washington Lee, wherever they chose to go. And was that good of an education? So, uh, now, w were you in ROTC when you I were was. you were at Washington oh, and Lee? Oh yeah, I was. Mm -hmm. I was in ROTC. So that so that's how you you, you from Not from Washington and Lee you were commissioned into yeah. the into the army, correct? Right. Okay. Spent two years in the army. Right from from fifty five uh, to fifty seven. Yeah, I went, I went in in fifty six. Mm, okay. Uh, and. My wife and I were we were scheduled to be married in October, and I got orders to go to Germany. Mm -hmm. We we shoved up the wedding to July, which is a tough time of year to get married. But I was uh, married in July as well, and I I can vouch and, uh, it is hot. And so my one of my uh, wife's mother's friends said, "Oh, honey, I can't." Imagine you can love somebody enough to get married in July. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, so and then after I got out of the service, um, I came back back to Augusta, lived in with my parents in Beach Island for oh I don't know six months or so. And sure. Then we moved into a rental house here in Augusta. What did you and, do while you were in the army? Uh, I was in the Transportation Corps, and actually I was Assistant Port Operation Officer at the at the, um, the, the seaport of Bremerhaven okay. in northern Germany, which is about the most, uh, there were so many pretty places to be stationed in Germany, Bremerhaven was not one of them. <laughs> you but need to get down south for the nice fortunately, parts. Uh, they had marvelous duck shooting in, yeah. <laughs> in that part of Europe, and uh, once I established myself as a as a duck hunter, I'd get a call from the port commander saying, "Lieutenant Simpkins, you will take General So and So hunting tomorrow." And I, yes, sir. I'll be glad to. So <laughs> I got to do some of that. That's good. And, uh, and when we, uh, the time I got back, I went to work for my father in the construction business. And I was having to be out of town a lot, and we were trying to you know, raise a family. I already had mm -hmm. a daughter, and I had a son coming along, and, and he was born, and I just decided I needed it. It was, it was tough. My mm -hmm. father and I were great friends, but we didn't exactly see eye to eye on, on business things. And uh, I told him one day I was going into real estate, and then he said, I can't think, what, what in the world are you going to do that for? <laughs> I just, I don't know, I just want to look fool with land, so. And, and here we are and in I, 2019. You know, I starved to death for a couple of years, but then it turned out all right. Yeah? Yeah. So, so what made you want to, want to get into the, the real estate business and into, into sell, you know, Good selling, question. buying and selling property? I, I, I don't know. I just was always, you know, interested in, in land. And I was, I didn't get into Residential business. I always dealt with farms and timberland, okay, and, and uh, industrial sites, you mm -hmm. know, raw land. And you, the bigger the better. But uh, 
And that's always been the the core part of the business is, yeah. is farmland. Okay. Yeah. Um, probably more timberland than Tim anything. So this would so this takes us up probably to the early 1960s, late 1950s. Well, I went in real estate business in 1959. 59. Okay. And. Uh, September of 59, and, um, and that was about the time I began to get interested in politics. And I had a good friend who was a former roommate at WNL from Tampa who kept egging me on about politics. He was always a staunch, outspoken conservative. Mm -hmm. I never knew what I was exactly, but uh, he he gave me some things to read, and about that time Goldwater was coming along and had written The uh, Constance of a Conservative, right. which I read and impressed me a lot. And f from that stimulus, uh, you know, I just, I just gradually got more and more interested in politics. And it was, um, and if you wanted to, you know, to try to make some changes in the way you thought the direction of things were going, I figured out the best way to do that was through the Republican Party. Mm -hmm. uh, we didn't start out, but we started uh, really on a more patriotic bent. Uh, there were several of us that formed something called Project Patriot. Mm -hmm. uh, we, would, we noticed it for the past several years there had been no July the 4th celebration or Armistice Day celebration. Uh, and we thought that was a shame. And uh, it just was, it, it seemed to be no expression of patriotism around. Goldwater helped stir that up. And uh, so we, we formed this group called Project Patriot. And uh, at the time, um, uh, Billy Morris mm -hmm. uh, from here, and um, Frank Troutman. Um, and he just passed away Frank recently. Recently passed away, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, Reginald Maxwell, um, some older friends that uh, never get, really were involved in politics. but um, And we got uh, Murphy Holloway from the First National Bank here. Uh, who always was a part of things. Mm -hmm. The general from Fort Garden, that was before Lyndon Johnson muzzled the military, and uh, they could participate in such things. And when we'd have a Fourth of July celebration, we'd get the band from Fort Garden, and uh, we'd get a lot of help from the general. And uh, uh, we had we had some notable speakers down there. One. Uh, you know, we had Paul Harvey. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, we had a couple of others that um, were in the limelight in those days. And um, and then the draft Goldwater movement started. So we all got involved in that. And uh, and there was really no Republican organization in Augusta. So uh, at that point, our life was pretty young. And, uh, so we decided to go the young Republican route. Okay, that 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 explained that I was going to ask you and, that question. Uh, <laughs> and and the only young Republican, really organized young Republican group, was in Atlanta. I mean, they'd have right. a few people that would come from Savannah, maybe, or sure. other parts of the state. But basically, the young Republicans were the in the state with active ones instead of the old line who would never organize Republicans. Mm -hmm. They'd just, they'd pop up every election year in the hopes that somehow maybe a Republican would be elected president. They might get an appointment to the post office or the GA's office or something. Yeah, rural ma mail carriers or something. And um, yeah. so, excuse me. Mm -hmm. um, we we saw it, well, we, if we're gonna we're gonna do it. We the first couple the few times we met, I think we could meet in the elevator. They used to say, "Well, we the elevator was plenty plenty big enough for our group <laughs> to have a meeting in." And uh, and then we sort of brought a few other people on board, 
Mm -hmm. uh, Frank Futrell in Augusta, Bill Sherrill, um, Bob Beckham. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then Ch was, was Chess Howard one of the Chess Howard mm -hmm. was really one of the key, and um, and then we got people like Ed o Douglas and and Reginald Maxwell and Jack Sherman and some others involved. But anyway, man, it was it was basically Frank Troutman, me, Frank Futrell, um, Chess Howard, Bill Sherrill, and one or two others, but we decided that we'd go to the next Republican meeting in Atlanta. And they were, weren't used to outsiders coming up there. By golly, you know, we pretty much took the plane over. Mm -hmm. I don't know how, how that happened, but uh, I guess because we were a little feisty as they were, but, uh, <laughs> uh, but, but from that we organized it become the, the, you know, the next general election, uh, 64 election, mm -hmm. um, after the draft Goldwater movement had brought in a bunch of people that mm -hmm. hadn't previously been involved in politics, let alone Republican politics. Right. But um, Bo Calloway was, of course, one of the keys, probably the key, and he had been elected to Congress, mm -hmm. and um, and and so uh, we got involved in the in the the process of electing delegates, right? Uh, and and we went over and, and managed somehow at the state convention to get the Republicans. And I, excuse me, the Goldwater Republicans, right. as opposed to the Rockefeller Republicans, um, elected to the various positions within the party ranks, and um, and 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 our delegates to the Republican convention that year in San Francisco. Um, I think, as I recall. Um, You had um, Whitney O'Keefe mm -hmm. was one of the delegates. Jamie Oglesby was a delegate, as I recall. Mm -hmm. From down in Thomasville. Uh, yeah, Joe Tribble from Savannah. Mm -hmm. Those Bo Calloway. And uh, Bootsy Calhoun from here in Augusta. Bootsy Calhoun. Um, and um, Roscoe Pickett. Roscoe. From up in uh, uh, Jasper, yeah. I think. He tried to outside of Atlanta, wasn't he? Well, he had he had a condo in Atlanta, but his his law firm was up in Pickens County. His That's right. Pickett, Pickett, and Pickett law firm. Yeah. Which I think is still active. Yeah, he was. Uh, he was one of the the old liners. Yes. But it, 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 he signed up with Goat early on, as opposed to the mm -hmm. other other side, and. Um, a couple other names uh, from the Goldwater people, uh, Ed Noble yeah, um, and, and Bill Dowda. I think he was a doctor, Dr. Bill Dowda from, from Atlanta. He, yeah. he was another one. Ed Noble. And uh, there was another one that I tried to remember a few minutes ago. Yeah. It was in the, in the quarry. That this, well, I know where to find the answer, uh, but uh, I don't have it. I don't mind. On the tip of my tongue. The cobwebs have got me. Well, there was Ralph Ivey from, from Rome. Yeah. He had run for Congress, I think, in 60, yeah. 60 and 62, maybe. Um, but this is all going on while you're going ru you're running a, a race for the state house in 64, too, right? Right. Um, they convinced when we were, um, no, 66 is when I ran. I didn't. Well, 66 was for Congress, right? Excuse me. You're right. Uh, I did run uh, at last minute. We, let me back up a little bit. Sure, 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 sure. Because you ran for commission. In 1962. Right. Here we go. Okay. No, a Republican had run in this county. Sure. Since, since Reconstruction. 
And so they told me, said, we got to, we got to get some have a run. I said, well, who are we going to get to run? They said, you. <laughs> I said, you've got to be kidding me. Well, we decided uh, that I agreed that I'd be the, the goat. <laughs> and so we were trying to figure out what we were going to run for and who we were going to run against. And we picked Herbert Elliott, who was an old line uh, cracker body Democrat. And that's Roy Harris's that, group. Yeah. And um, and and uh, Mr. Herbert, as I always called him, you know, they <laughs> ran the, the, what the premier funeral homes here. And, uh, and it's ironic, but, but, uh, Herbert Elliott Jr. was a con classmate and contemporary of mine and a very close friend. And I don't think he took kindly from me running <laughs> against his father. But that, he was the, his father was the old entrenched kind of politician that mm -hmm. we were in those days, idealistically, you know, they were the ones we wanted to right. get out and uh, get, make some changes. Right. So um, we, uh, one of the slogans we came up with uh, was, uh, let's bury Elliot for a change. But they thought, <laughs> didn't think well of that. Well, and, he was uh, a funeral home director. So. <laughs> thought he'd run a funeral. But I said, no, we can't do that. I said, okay, we won't do that. But, uh, <laughs> but anyhow, um, they wouldn't let us on the ballot. Hmm. We didn't know the process. And I can't remember exactly what the process was in those days, but you had to you had to register t as a candidate by a certain time. Right, the, the qualifying. And, and when we said we were going to run and announce to run, they said you, you're too late. Didn't have primaries no day. Right. They said, well, what do you mean too late? I said, well, you didn't register in time. I said, well. But if you check, I don't think the Democrats registered either. <laughs> but the judge, Judge Anderson, he was of that particular political group, and he was a tough old bugger. And uh, and so they just wouldn't let us on the ballot. And we said, well, we're going to run any. I run as a write-in candidate. And uh, they had these huge voting machines in those days. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, if you weren't five foot ten or eleven, you couldn't reach the little slot where you had to write in. And um, we took <laughs> a group of people trying to help us out. Some of my friends, here, a couple of lawyers uh, that were friends, older guys, but who had gotten involved in this young Republican movement. Mm -hmm. um, one Saturday, I remember they carried this huge voting machine, must weigh two hundred pounds. They're big. Down to, down to um, uh, Waynesburg because they were holding Superior Court down there that day. And mm -hmm. Judge Anderson said that he would receive us down there to plead our case. Well, they had to lug this machine upstairs so they could show Judge Anderson how difficult it was to write in, and that wasn't fair. Well, that didn't make any difference. <laughs> Judge Anderson said, well, you boys wasting your time. So. Uh, and we proceeded anyway, and I think that the greatest expenditure we had in the campaign was pencils and Coca-Cola crates that you could stand on to reach the I was going to ask right in you, place. I was going to ask and if you distributed had stools. Instructions on how to do that. Mm -hmm. But um, and it's interesting. They would make you write in um, the full name and the office. Uh, for instance, in my case, it was Leroy H. Simpkins, Jr., Fall County Commission. Not Roy Simpkins or... or no, it, Simpkins. It had, to, it had to be precise, so they threw it out. We still managed somehow to get several thousand... It, I, um, I, I looked the number of ...votes. It was over 2,500 valid counted votes, so... 
And the, the other fellows, I think, were, were, were like 7,000, 8,000. Yeah, so. um, pretty but impressive. Anyway, we got a lot of sympathy, you know, and, <laughs> and a lot of people had their votes just thrown out. Right, right. So I don't know really in the final out how we really did, but we, we got, as you say, I, I didn't remember how many valid mm -hmm. votes, but we had, we had a few. But uh, it, I, re I read somewhere, even though you came up short, you did get a, a, a reception with Mamie Eisenhower out out of it. W was that because the, well, the president had come down to yeah, the, the golf Eisenhower's course? Yeah, Eisenhower was out at the Augusta National, right. and the and the uh, the women's Republican group had a luncheon and invited Mamie, and she came, and they invited me uh, to to come and say a few words and to mm -hmm. and to meet. Ms. Eisenhower. You, you weren't a member at the time, were you? No, no. No, no. No, that was much, much later. Okay. And um, so um, no, I, I didn't become a member until 1976. Okay. Um, but uh, things, things moved along, and I was elected to the legislature, mm -hmm. and at that time, I think we had something like three uh, Republican senators, and there were only five of us in the House, as I recall. Out of 205, there were five of us. That's right. That's before they, they, they shrunk it yeah, down to and 180. Then they, and of course, it then Lyndon Johnson was able to ram through the Civil Rights Act and the Voting Rights Act, and of 65, which called for, required a special election in 65 because of reapportionment. June 1965. And so I had to run again in 1965. I had run against um, John Bell, mm -hmm. who was a, a, a very sweet gentleman, mm -hmm. uh, but he was old line, and, and I don't know how we happened to pick Mr. John to run against, but uh, we did. and. Um, he was a sort of a milk toast guy, real sweet, not outspoken at all, and um, we had a little bit more piss and vinegar in us than some <laughs> of that group did in those days. But um, anyway, I ran again, and, and they were sure they were, they thought that the first time we won, it was it was just a fluke because of the Goldwater support. Sure, sure, sure. But by golly, we won the second time too. And uh, and because I won, uh, they, they were trying to get a a, a, a full slate or as close to full slate as possible to run for con the congressional seats at the same time Bo Calloway was running for governor. Mm -hmm. And um, and we went to a we went to a uh, a, a, a gathering at Callaway Gardens, and um, I'll never forget me. Uh, Mo was hosting the thing, mm -hmm. and Don Rumsfeld, right, came right, from Illinois, and he was a young, very articulate, outspoken Republican uh, from Illinois, and. And, he, and I happened to be sitting next to him at dinner, and they be, had been trying to coax me into running for running for uh, Congress, and because I was, I guess if you would, 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 would <laughs> I guess technically I was a House Minority Leader. That's how you were listed in the uh, the official register was, was House Minority Leader. Yeah, no, and that that, that, that that was the Minority Leader was really the head of a. We did elect quite a few more Republicans in that special election. Right, I think it went right. up being about a dozen. Yeah, there were some out of Cobb, uh, uh, Ben Jordan out, yeah. out of Cobb County. I think he was yeah. from a Smyrna. Um, there were quite a few in the, the the inner suburbs of Atlanta. Yeah. Some from Columbus and Macon and. and Basically, the cities back then were, were, were sending Paul. the Republicans. Uh, uh, not home, Paul from Macon. Uh, hmm. Oh, come on. Yeah. 
Uh, oh. all, um, I, all I can think is... Um, he was in the construction, in the pre-stressed concrete business. Um, uh, uh, Paul Jones. Yeah. G. Paul Jones. Uh -huh. Yep. His wife's name was Dallas. Dallas Jones. Yep. And, uh, and, and then there was, a, there was one more from that area, and then there was one from uh, was Oliver Bateman. Mm -hmm. He, he was in the he, Senate, he, he, state he, Senate, yeah. and then uh, and then you had somebody from from Columbus, whose name escapes me right now, mm -hmm. uh, and and Jamie Oglesby. Mm -hmm. Joe Trouble was still up there. Right, right. He was in the state and, Senate. Uh, but um, Rodney Cohen mm -hmm. from Atlanta, and. Uh, Rodney Cook? I'm, that's what I'm doing, I think. Rodney yeah. Cook, not Rodney Cohen. Your fellow Washington and Lee yeah. alum. Yeah. And he was, Rodney was, uh, he was uh, on, 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 on an older line Republican. He had, he had lined up with the, with the Rockefeller group. Yes. Yep. Yeah, he was not part of the Go Order movement. Mm-hmm. And, uh, so we always looked at him with a jaundiced eye, <laughs> but he was a very intelligent guy, and uh, and a very and a very uh, conscientious uh, legislator too. Right. Um, but uh, we elected two more from Augusta uh, in that special election: uh, Regnal Maxwell and Jack Sherman. And uh, I think they were elected that that time. Um, I, I maybe have that a, was maybe that was later. I have a couple that names. Sixty six. Um, James Hull. Jim Hull. Was Jim a, Hull. Yeah, Jim Hull was a Democrat. Okay. Okay. So yeah. so Jim Hull. I guess Ed Luke was probably the Democrat too. Yeah. So that's who those two gentlemen beat. Uh huh. Um. But. Uh, actually, there was much less uh, combativeness in those days right. between the Republicans and Democrats. We didn't have enough Republicans to really be, uh, you know, put up any kind of <laughs> big front or anything. So they kind of let us get away with murder. You know, I mean, we could actually even get occasionally a piece of legislation passed. Now, the, the, yeah, now, these were the days before Speaker Murphy. So this would have been uh, no, no, George T. Smith. What, yeah, no, when he wasn't, he wasn't, he wasn't speaker. speaker. Right. Now, he was Speaker uh, when I, when I, after losing for, for Congress, uh, and I ran again in 68 mm -hmm. and was elected, and, and Murphy was Speaker then. I'd always gotten along real good with Tom Murphy. Mm -hmm. For some reason, now he was a irascible old guy, <laughs> and he really was smart, though, and mm -hmm. very dedicated mm -hmm. in what he was doing. And uh, but he and I sat close together uh, those first two years. Mm -hmm. I was in the legislature, and and he was always he was always real nice to me. Mm -hmm. And even later, he was he was nice. To me. What do you remember about um, Speaker George T. Smith? Oh, he was terrific. He was from down in Cairo. Yeah, yeah. So, so George T. And then when you came and back, George L. George L. Came and he back was when you from came Swainsboro or somewhere right Yes, there. Swainsboro, there in uh, uh, Emmanuel, and, uh, Emmanuel County. I remember one time, uh, but we got along, and we just. I think we were more civil with our politics in those days mm -hmm. than, than they are today. I, I don't. Um, I think there was a lot more mutual respect maybe than there is now. Right. Um, but I remember my, my father-in-law got quite ill, and I can't remember just what the problem was. But my wife family was from Covington, which you know not too far from Atlanta, no. 35 miles. And they were trying to get him in a hospital in Atlanta. And and they said they didn't have any room. 
and he couldn't get in. He needed to go to the hospital in a little, right. it was a little nothing kind of a hospital in Covington. Right. So I said, well, let me see what I can do. I called George T. I got him on the phone and I told him what my problem was and I said, can you help us get in Grady Hospital in Atlanta? And he said, I'll call you back shortly. He called me back within an hour and he said, you in. I'll never get that. I know. You can rest assured I always had a hiring office. I bet. I bet. Yeah. And, uh, but George L. too. I mean, we were. I, I remember going to his funeral. I went to. But there was some. There was some interesting folks in the legislature who. Uh, a lot of them, a lot of their, uh, their legacies, and I think a lot of them wound up switching over to the Republican Party, because mm. uh, that basically they would, you know, we thought so much alike, and that uh, that was when they, that was when the two parties began to polarize, mm. you know, where it used to not be so nearly so polarized. Right, right. So, tell me about your run for Congress. You you were running against um, Bob Stevens from Bob Athens. Bob Stevens. So, um, tell me about that campaign. <laughs> well, we were really doing pretty well, and we were, we had a pretty good organization. And didn't have a we didn't raise much money. Mm-hmm. You didn't uh, have to back then. Huh? Not not nearly as much back then. That you needed to run, run for Congress. No, and um, and of course I didn't have any money. I mean that was stupid for me to run to Congress. But I remember telling my father one day I used to have lunch with him a lot, and we were having lunch. I said, "Dad, I tell you what," he said, "I said I'm not really concerned about the way this country's going. I'm thinking about running for Congress." He said, "What? <laughs> You've got to be kidding!" And I said, "No, I think that's what I've decided to do." And um, so, but Volk Calloway and Donald Rumsfeld and some of my buddies here and some of the other guys in the state that I got to know really pressed me hard. And we had a we had a good group of guys. I wish I could remember all the names mm-hmm. that ran for Congress while Bo was running for governor. They thought that you know because of our campaigns that we would strengthen Bo's. And it did, uh, and we were doing pretty doggone good until um, they, the Democrats had to have a runoff, and uh, and I remember Bo Callaway called us all the all the congressional candidates together. We had a meeting down in I don't know Pine Mountain, I guess. Well, maybe it was in Lincoln, but anyway. I remember having a meeting on board, having a, he had a a, a, a a big campaign bus. Oh, yeah. We met on that bus and went somewhere. And I can remember he and his right-hand man, Bill Amos. That's right. Uh, said to tell us, in this runoff for the Democrat nomination, we need to support Lester Maddox. I said, you have got to be kidding me. No, no, that's what we got to do. We've come close to beating beating Lester Maddox and we will. And I said, I think that's a mistake. And it was. Do you remember anybody else, uh, anybody else who was on that bus w- with you during Well, all the congressional candidates, I can't, as I say, I can't remember. Oh. Paul Jones, one of them, maybe? Pa- Paul Jones, I think he was running against Bill Stuckey, yeah. maybe? No, 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 no. Mac Mattingly was running against Stucky, yeah. but Paul Jones was running against Jack Flint uh, in the sixth. Uh-huh. Um, so it would have been, oh, uh, I think maybe Carswell was one was one of them. Um, I wish I could remember. There was one great guy from down around. He wasn't from Columbus. Well, he was from Columbus, and there was another one from Griffin or somewhere like that. Okay, well, that's not it. And. Uh, I wish you'd come up with those names for me because I'd like to remember those names. I don't know how I could forget them. 
It's, because we were a pretty tight knit group. The thing about it is, once I was old, and if we went years, went what fifty years without really having much social intercourse. In the, right. So so, okay. So there was Ben Blackburn um, in the fourth district. Yeah. Fletcher Thompson in the fifth yeah. district. Paul Jones in the sixth. Mm-hmm. Um, Mac. Joe Tribble. Joe, Joe Tribble. Well, that was the first district. Um, uh, Mac Mattingly was running in the eighth district. Mm-hmm. The seventh district, that would have been up in Cobb County. Yeah, um, was it, that wasn't. Uh, oh, what was his name? Newt. Newt no, that, 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 was, that was too here. early for Newt. Um, oh, but, um, I think Carswell was running too, and and the Carswell family came out of around Statesboro, Emanuel County, or maybe Porter Carswell. Oh, Porter Carswell. That's, I think that's who. No, he's from Waynesboro. Okay, so it was Waynesboro. Yeah, Porter Carswell. He was a much older guy. Yes, and, from uh, down in the, the bird dog capital of the world. Yeah, and oh, Mr. Porter, he was, uh, he was, he was just amazing sort of a guy. But they had a, a big land, land-owning family, yeah. I think, a yeah. big, big farmland. Um, and, uh, but, uh, yeah, I'd almost forgotten that. Um, Anyhow, uh, we thought out, you know, we were, we were making some progress, mm-hmm. really. We thought it looked like we might just actually slip up and get elected <laughs> until Lester Midas got the nomination. And everything in the, a lot, a lot, a lot of the 10th district was rural. Right. And right. all of the, all of that. Rural crowd, you know, that was just big Maddox country, and they, and a lot of the, you know, the the mill workers and a lot of right. the, the labor union people, all of them, you know, they love Les Maddox, and uh, and a lot of the lot of the agricultural people, right, and so uh, while Bo uh, won the majority of the votes, he didn't, or the plurality of the votes, he didn't win the majority, right. Which threw what they, oh in, in the meantime, we lost a lot of our support because there was so much straight ticket voting in right. those days. That was I can still remember a thing. going up. I was working the fifth ward here, which is a mill district, and I had a lot of friends there. And um, I ran into an old classmate of mine from what was from uh, Richmond Academy, just coming out of the poll. He said, "Oh man," he said. They got him. He said, "I went in there and I cast a vote for you and, Le- and I just for, for you and old Lester." Said, "I just pulled that one lever." I said, "Well, you just voted against me." He said, "I did. I didn't know that." <laughs> those those were very for for people who who've never seen those machines. There there were knobs you had to turn, and, yeah. and the races were numbered, and so it didn't actually have the names and everything yeah. and. They were much more complicated than today with the touch screens or even just a you know, fill in the fill in the blank. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, that doesn't surprise me at all. And, and you had ballots the size of bed sheets that you had to had to read through. So I'm sure you did lose a few votes <laughs> yeah. just because it was so complicated. It was it was a mess, but. Um... And then after I, I served that um, that term that began in 1960, you know, from the from the 1968 election, I had started we started we several of us were working for this same real estate company called Sherman Hen Street, an old established company here and um, and there were three of us in that company that wanted 
had been sort of itching to go off on our own, and we decided to form another company and leave. Mm -hmm. And uh, and we formed a company called Simpkins, Mary, and O'Connor. And, uh, and that didn't last but about two years because it was a kind of a lopsided deal. And uh, anyway, I, I, I couldn't, I, I didn't run again in 70 because uh, I had been, you know, in the legislature and out, and then in the legislature, right. and and the difference in my uh, income being in and out was a hundred percent difference. And for years I was in the legislature, uh, I made half of what I would normally make, right, in, in generating sales and commissions and whatnot. So I just figured I couldn't do both, and uh, and I chose not to run again. I did stay involved, and for a while I was chairman of the of the Tenth uh, District Republican Party, mm -hmm. and then uh, I I went to the national convention in. Uh, when Nixon was nominated, that's what. In uh, uh, well, there was sixty-eight. Sixty-eight. That was uh, well, sixty-eight and seventy-two both were um, uh, Miami Beach, down in Miami. Yeah. Um, and seventy-six was. And, and I was, huh? And seventy-six was Kansas City, I think. Kemper, Kemper Arena. Yes, that's sixty-eight. It, it was in the seventy-six. Definitely in. Yeah. In Kansas City, so were, and I went there too. Were you, were you a Nixon supporter or a Reagan? So I, well, I suppose I, you weren't a Rockefeller supporter, but no, I was. Um, I was a Nixon supporter mm -hmm. when Nixon was running, but Reagan. I mean, there really wasn't any opposition to Nixon. I mean, there was no Rockefeller, right? Uh, but then I was for Reagan when Ford got the renomination in '76. Mm. And I was very disappointed in the way that thing went because I was I was strong Reagan, mm -hmm. and uh, and I didn't think he got fair deal in that convention. Well, the Georgia party was was sort of split between because because Bo Calloway had been so close to Ford and Nixon. Uh, Calloway had been Ford's uh, campaign manager for a while before. Uh, Oh, uh, to, uh, uh, James A. Baker, the third, took over, yeah. um, um, and then Mac Mac Mattingly was the the chairman at the time, and Paul Coverdell was a big, big uh, Ford supporter. But but you and, and who were some of the other Reagan folks um, in the party at the time? Paul, uh, Paul Holmes. I mean Paul Jones. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Jamie Oglesby and um, I keep, uh, Bootsy Calhoun. Mm -hmm. uh, Bootsy was a, a delegate to that convention. Uh, it, 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 I think in 76, it seems to me that I was a delegate in 64 and again in 68, but that I was uh, uh, Maybe an alternate delegate to uh, I can't remember whether I was a delegate or an alternate delegate. Mm -hmm. to I know that I I took my entire family to that one. I had I took my children to seventy six to uh, St. Louis. I mean to uh, Kansas City. Okay. So the, the the party, when you got involved back in the '60s, you know we, we we mentioned about how small it was, and you could meet in an elevator. How had the party changed um, in those intervening years between the early '60s, Goldwater, by the time 1976 rolls around? Well, what's the what's the sort of the shape and the state of the Georgia Republican Party? Well, it had Republican grown pretty party? good, and uh, 
and we had um, uh, we had uh, you know more, more elected Republican officials. Uh, the local Republican uh, group was pretty doggone well organized. Mm -hmm. uh, we had elected uh, more than one uh, person to the county commission. Um, and um, we still hadn't elected a, a Republican congressman. Mm -hmm. um, Charlie Norwood was the first, I guess, mm -hmm. and later on. And uh, and in those days, I don't, Charlie Norwood never was on the scene in the days when I was real active in the Republican right. Party. He came along, along later. When did you? When did your period of of, of sort of high intensity activity? When did that end? Probably ended after Reagan's election. Okay. Um, so Reagan's elected in nineteen eighty. Did you just step away from politics because other things? No, you know I. I was working hard. I had more things that I'm sure. taking taking my time, and uh, and um, I got I got less active and was able to put more money. I was able to contribute more in in dollars than I was in time. Right. Uh, I ran out of time, <laughs> and. Uh, and at some point, you know, the young crowd needed to take it, take it over anyway. But um, and they had a lot more energy. I was getting. I guess if you, the older you got, the lazier you got. <laughs> but, uh, uh, fortunate that they, that affliction doesn't uh, take over. Some people, because uh, I know some older Republicans who are just as enthusiastic and just as Involved as they all in the mm -hmm. What? But, um, why do you think? Why do you think that the, the Democratic Party here in Georgia was able to hold on to power so long in the state? It wasn't until Sonny Perdue won in two thousand two that, that 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 Republicans were able to elect a a governor, and the and the, the state Senate changed, and the House changed shortly thereafter. Why do you think it took so long? For that to happen. Well, it was just so, you know, everybody and everything was so deeply entrenched in the old ways. And I think I don't care what 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 you're talking about in the way of issues and all, but but you know, it, it nothing ever happens when you've got generations of of, of a way to do something. Mm -hmm. You don't just all of a sudden. Change the way of doing business, right. and so it just it it was it was a gradual process, and I think probably should have been a gradual process. Yeah, uh, some some people they they when they talk about you know, Georgia politics, they, they 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 say, well, people like Sam Nunn and Jimmy Carter, those are Georgia Democrats. They're not Democrats. Do do you think that 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 term has any meaning today to be a Georgia no, Democrat? No. Uh, I mean, it used to, when you think about it, um, although I don't think I'd necessarily put Sam Nunn in that group. Sam was, Sam was, um, you know, he's strong on national defense and um, maybe some, some fiscal issues, but but on social issues and other things, Sam was always pretty liberal. And, uh, and then on key votes, you know, he would, Frequently go to the other side, and I just didn't ever did understand that. I mean, I, I mean, like the Panama Canal, for instance, and there were some other things. Appointments, he would go against the uh, an appointment that I thought he should have. Mm -hmm. That I thought, by all reason and logic, he should have gone right. with, and he went against it. And uh, uh, I mean, it went through a period there where Sam was, uh, he was quick to support uh, whoever the, the Democrat choice was 
regardless of how way out there they might have been. And uh, I mean, I mean, he was early on coming out to support Obama, mm -hmm. for instance. And uh, you know, I just didn't understand that. Sam and I had very similar backgrounds. I mean, he grew up on a farm. His farm was bigger than our farm, but but he was he, he came from a farm family to do and. Mm -hmm. uh, Sam, when Sam was first elected to the legislature, he sat right behind me. Okay, yeah. And uh, he was he was elected in that special election after reapportionment. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that's when he was elected. But I know he sat right behind me, and we were, you know, we were very good friends. And we, uh, I, I visited him a couple of times at his at his farm, and. Uh, and I always liked him. I mean, he was a very convivial guy. Mm -hmm. I remember I went down like, in later years, I, I hadn't seen Sam in several years. He, he's a member of Gus National now, but mm -hmm. but uh, that time he wasn't. And he was, I went over there one day for lunch and, uh, and my good friend, Bev Dolan, who was head of Textron, that dad was from Augusta and had been a good friend for a long time. And he was there, and when I walked in, I heard this boy said, Roy, how you doing? And I looked over and there was Beth. And, and he had Sam Nunn there as his guest. And I went over there and I said, don't go, it's good to see all of you. Sam, I haven't seen you in a long time. I said, Bev, thank you for bringing Sam down to Augusta. I keep him here for a while. He hasn't cast a proper vote in two months. <laughs> so I just, uh, so it has. So, so we're, we were talking about Georgia Democrat and, 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 and I guess that that title would probably be better for you know the, an older generation, the, the Dick Russells and the Herman Talmages yeah, and, and the, some of those congressmen that we were talking, Jack Flint and yeah, the, the, those guys. But do, do you think there's there's such a thing as like a Georgia Republican, or is, is it pretty well the parties are are nationalized anymore now that if you're a Republican here, you you I don't see a whole lot. I can't much the same. You know, there's always been a, a, a sort of a liberal um, wing, if you have it, uh, from um, from up in the Northeast. Mm. Uh, but I say that, that, that there's not a which. <laughs> I don't think of the political bit of difference in the Republicans of of the old South and the Republicans of the Midwest. Mm -hmm. uh, and, um, and of course, you used to think there were some great Republicans in in California, and I did was hard, hard pressed to find one out there today. Uh, I, I think they're down to eight congressmen, eight Republican congressmen out of yeah. 50, well, uh, 50 some. Well, George Murphy, you know, used to be mm -hmm. senator. That was, and Reagan was governor, mm -hmm. and you know, I mean, you just Nixon. Had, Nixon came out of out, out yeah. of California. Um, but uh, but um, there used to be some some good solid. Um, I guess you'd have to say middle of the road Democrats from all over the place. Mm. And um, Scoop Jackson from Washington is one I remember very well. And I always had great admiration for him. And uh, and there were, and even old uh, Dirksen. Oh yeah, yeah, uh, Everett Dirksen. From and you know he Illinois. I mean he was you know you get on the opposite side, but I mean he he was kind of he would listen to read. I mean he respected the republic. Mm -hmm. And I don't think it would be hard pressed to find a, a Democrat these days in the in the Congress that gives a, it, it that even can spell republic. <laughs> um, you, 
you know, so we, we talked about, you know, it was it wasn't until 2002 when Sonny Perdue became governor, and, and since that time we've had Sonny Perdue and Nathan Deal and now Brian Kemp um, from Athens. How, how has Georgia under Republican uh, governors, how has it changed from the way it was run during you know, the Zell Millers and Joe Frank Harris? You're asking the wrong man. All right. I'm, uh, I've been, you know, been away from that for, for so long. Uh, I think you'd have to, to ask that question to somebody that would be more contemporary. Sure, sure. Uh, Well, you know, you're you're somebody who who helped build the party and, and, and ran some elections and won some elections, and Republicans have now been in charge of the state for roughly, you know, sixteen, seventeen years, going on two decades. What do you think the biggest danger to to the Republican Party maintaining control, maintaining its majority in the state? What what might uh, enable the Democrats to make a comeback? Well, you know, you do, the demographics seem to be changing dramatically. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I, there's not much you can, you can do about that politically I, that, that I can see. Right. That's just something that, that happens. And so I think the Republicans have got to be smarter than, than the rest of the crowd. I think they've got to be. Um, I think they've got to be productive in the, in the um, issues they take on, and uh, and I think they've got to be resolute in, in what they intend to get done. I just, um, they've got to be better than the other side, and I, I mean better in every way. Right. I think they've got to be smarter on the one hand, and I think they've got to be more dedicated, and uh, they've got to be selfless, and um, and I think they want to serve to serve for the what they consider the, the betterment of everybody, and not just these various factions. Well, what 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 sort of Business endeavors are you you undertaking these days? Are you? you know? I, I, as I say, I've gotten in most every category. I've gotten old and lazy, but uh, I come. I just uh, kind of look try to look after my own stuff, and I, and from time to time, I'll see a project that I get real interested in, and I try to tackle that and see if I can make a deal. I still like to make a deal. So, so retirement's not not on the horizon. For, no, I can't. Mr. I can't imagine not going to work in the morning, and not that I'm productive, <laughs> but I do. I, you know, I've still got some extracurricular things that sure. go on that I've been involved in. I've gotten off a lot of boards and commissions, that sort of thing. But um, there's always a windmill out there to fight, and lately. <laughs> Uh, we've been thought for the last four or five years in this thing you see right here, with, um, it's a, which involves the Corps of Engineers trying to um, uh, take out our lock and dam downstream uh, 12 miles, which would uh, be devastating to the city of Augusta and the North Augusta, and to all the landowners between the end there. Mm -hmm. And it's a complicated subject, but um, I got involved initially because they wanted to take some of my land for this fish passage, mm -hmm. and they were going to disrupt. I have a farm over on the river on the South Carolina side, and and they were going to completely disrupt my my place and uh, open it up to the public, and I didn't I didn't appreciate that, and. Uh, so I was trying to do something about that, and then uh, they changed that, and now they uh, they're proposing to to do some things that, um, unfortunately, could be very harmful. I think 
than a lot of other people think too. Um, to both this, both sides of the river, mm. and uh, and our city government is is on our side of this issue, as is its government of North Augusta. So you, we we are in, involved in politics to the extent that we've been working, trying to work hard through our mm. congressmen and senators to put a rein on what the Corps of Engineers is trying to do. And uh, I'm somewhat disappointed that so far uh, we're not getting we're not getting the help out of Purdue or Isaacson than than we would hope to. Uh, mm -hmm. And because Johnny Isaacson's not really in a position to do much anymore, which is sad. I, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, uh, Lindsey Graham. It's certainly uh, he's right there, and and he's very helpful. As is Scott from South Carolina. Mm -hmm. Both the congressmen from, uh, on each side of the river, both of them are very much on board with what we that our group has been trying to do. We have a group called Save the Middle of Savannah River, and uh, and uh, that's. That's an ongoing process, and um, and it's taken a lot of time. Is uh, is your congressman, uh, uh, Congressman Rick Allen. Allen? Yeah, yeah, and he's he's very much on on board. Mm -hmm. um, we have a unfortunately we've got a city government that's not. That's not the strongest or the most effective city government in the state, uh, and so while we get some uh, we get support there, it's, it's not very well organized support and not very effective support. So. Well, and, and you know, at least every April you have something to look forward to at the golf oh, course, yeah. but. Um, uh, yeah, that's always a big, a big deal in Augusta. As long as the yeah. rain stays away, that's uh, like a lost week. I feel like when, <laughs> uh, you feel like it's when, when the, uh, the end of rush week when you're in college. You know, <laughs> well, when, that, you, when that's over. Well, you know, I, I guess a lot of people probably rent out their houses and get out of town for the for well, the good, week. Uh, uh, quite a few do. Yeah, uh, but. Uh, a percentage wide is not that many, mm -hmm. and uh, but we got a lot of influx of, of folks, and mm -hmm. uh, and because of the limitation of Christ uh, ticket sales, right, uh, it doesn't get bigger every year. It just uh, mm -hmm. it kind of stays the same, um, but. Even so, you get a lot of influx of new people from, from basically all over the world. All around the world, yeah. Yeah. Has 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 anybody ever measured the economic impact? Yeah, of the have. masters. And I've forgotten what those numbers are, but uh, it's pretty significant. Sure, sure. Yeah. Well, Mr. Simpkins, is there anything else we we missed, or you want to record for posterity? No, but I think it's great what you're doing, and uh, I wish that my cobweb weren't so thick. No. And, uh, but I hope that, and uh, you've learned something today that you maybe not didn't Absolutely. learn well before. And, Absolutely. Uh, but, uh, but I need to sit down and talk to you and get just get my memory, my memory refreshed because you, you've done so many of these and they've been studying it so long. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sure you'd you'd pass the exam a whole lot with a higher <laughs> grade than I would. Well, I, I'm not so sure about that, but I appreciate it. Um, so thank you, uh, and on behalf of the Richard B. Russell Library uh, at the University of Georgia, thank you very much, Mr. Simpkins. Well, thank you.